here in the community of Kora, about 130,000 people live with poverty, uh, lots of leprosy and HIV, and lots of prostitution. This is the poorest community in Ethiopia. The people here really, in many ways, are considered outcast. They are very poor. They uh, struggle to have a, a decent living situation. There's lack of sanitation here. Uh, there are many, many orphans here, and families who live here uh, really, uh, they struggle to squeak by month to month. Average life here in Kora is, is a difficult one. Most lives here are very labor intensive just to do the basics to sustain a family. In the dump there are people who, who live there, there are people who work there. They um, scavenge through the garbage to find things that can be sold to try and make a living. Some people scavenge for food to eat. This is a place where all the children of Kora, where all the people of Kora come trying to earn uh, daily food to eat. I'm not going to say what you're going to do. I'm not going to say what you're going to do. I'm not going to say what you're going to do. Project 61 began so almost uh, a year and a half ago. A woman that came with uh, visiting orphans meet with me and she get to uh, see the children at the trash dump and, and she get to hear the vision and the history of these children. And she went back share this story to her church and, and she created this program uh, to support this vision with her friends. My wife Summer came on a trip with visiting orphans Sammy was their guide at that time, and um, they visited the trash dump here in Addis. So there's about 65 orphans who live here, and also other children also from the community, which their uh, parents are disabled and lepers, uh, that they can afford to feed them. So that, those children also live in here. When I first visited the trash dump um, in Cora, I was overwhelmed, really. It was not what I had expected. It was so much larger and so much more just offensive, really, than I had expected it to be. I was also just overwhelmed by the number of children that were there and just the need and just kind of the desperation that they had. The night before they went to the dump, she got a chance to sit down and talk with Sammy for a while uh, and, and saw the hope that, that came out of Sammy, saw that there was a person that, that lived that life that is now living a life for the people now and he's he's really directed at trying to help the people that he was once a complete part of and still is a part of. I was born in Cora and when I was uh, four years old my grandma used to bring me here so I live about eight years here in, at the trash dump. The fact that she was able to talk to Sammy first and hear his testimony and hear what the possibilities were the next day when she visited the kids she didn't see just kids that just wanted something or needed something. She saw kids that could be something. There was too much potential there that was wasting away. Just so many ideas and knowledge and they were funny and they were fun and, and all of those things. And so I just knew that they had not been forgotten and that we would be able to help them. We began just this project to get them American sponsors and move them to a school outside of the city to just a new beautiful campus and a place with open air and green trees and beds and food and all things that they never had before. There's a school uh, about three hours out of the city of Addis where we live here that uh, has graciously agreed to, to take the kids in. We take them to a place where uh, they can be supported they can feed three times a meal, they don't have to worry. There is a good a shelter, there is a good environment and a, a good campus where they can be educated, where they can grow mentally and physically and spiritually, that they can have a, a better future to change their life and their future family. We first just decided that we were going to sponsor two kids. We were going to send them to this boarding school. And then we started to think, well, okay, if we're willing to do this, other people are probably willing to do this as well. It built from there. And so a couple of the people on her team 
uh, had the same idea. Can I send this one? Then our friends all jumped on board and, and then it just started to grow and grow and grow from there. And so started with a small group of children and as we got back and started telling people what we were doing, I mean the number of people that wanted to, to get on board, wanted to help and wanted to find a kid that they could help too is what has steamrolled this thing and made it what it is so far. With the help of, you know, visiting orphans teams and, and just some amazing women, we ended up with 250 kids, which was so far above what we had thought. I mean, my original thought was that we were going to have 100 kids, and I thought, oh, if we get 100, that's amazing. And then to end up with 250 was nothing short of a miracle. The Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. We loaded up three really large buses and drove them away to the boarding school. For some of the kids, it was the first time they had ever left Addis Ababa. They were hanging out the windows and singing songs and waving Ethiopian flags. It was a beautiful day. Today we are here uh, in Shashamane, about a four hour drive from Kora. This is a boarding school that uh, exists for about 64 years. This is where a lot of people send their children. Uh, those people who can afford to pay for them, usually rich people uh, that send their kids here. So here they can have a good education in a shelter, meal three times a day they can eat. They can be self-sufficient, depend on themselves that they can be someone for future in encouragement where they can learn and grow here. His name is uh, uh, Camille Adam. One of the kids that uh, uh, I'm uh, writing his profile uh, looking for a sponsorship where he can go uh, to school uh, uh, to have education and a better uh, future life. Yeah, Matnat it's a really beautiful place comparing the community of Kora and here is totally like paradise. But I'm Arif now. The results uh, of the program so far have been um, far out of whatever thought they would be. And what we've seen is 250 kids from core area in the trash dump have made their way to Shashamini to receive three meals a day, a bed to sleep in, an education. It's really amazing. It brought a lot of uh, mentally and uh, physically change in the neighborhood. People uh, now are motivated and thinking that there is a hope. You see just like a light come to their eyes and you see them kind of hold themselves differently and walk differently as a child that has hope and not just no idea what tomorrow will bring. We know we're, we need to help and we need to do something, but to actually get to see it work, that's been the most amazing thing about being part of Project 61. To see kids that formerly were living on a trash dump, which is one of the most horrific things that I've ever seen in my life, so then just to come here to this beautiful boarding school, it just brought tears to my eyes because this Project 61 is changing lives. Professor. <laughs> I 
Our plan right now, uh, in continuation of the project, the upkeep of the kids, keeping them healthy, keeping them supplied with things they need for school. The boarding school where the kids currently are is full. They cannot take any more children. We are looking into other boarding schools, other potential sites to bring more kids in for a child that needs a home. Ultimately though, we would like to be able to help children in their homes. The children in the trash dump, um, we had to kind of take extreme measures. We had to get them out of there because there was no care point for them still in Gora. But for children who have a care point but are still in a desperate situation, we want to do what we can to help them in their home and in their community. <laughs> From the people that help find sponsors for the kids and match those up to the people that keep us going back home, that every single sponsor that has taken their resources, their time, and, and their hearts for these kids, that you're doing a good thing and to continue doing a good thing. And we will facilitate that in every way possible, and that's what we're here to do. We, by no means, could have done this alone. To do this project, to do what we have done, has taken just a multitude of people. I mean, we have probably about 200 American sponsors. We have just a team of volunteers at home who help us just to organize and oversee these projects. We have so many people who just volunteer to spread the word and just who talk about it and who talk to their friends about it. And what an amazing thing that is because that's how it spreads and that's how just the word gets around. And so we are the people who are here, but if there were not hundreds of people at home helping us, we could have done none of this. We're just blessed to be a part of this organization that can, that can connect people in America that want to do something to these kids that need something. Getting the opportunity to just love the community and just watch what Project 61, it's, it's hard to not, it's just so contagious and I can't wait to come back. <laughs> As you see me here, I am today with the same children that are seven months ago almost at the trash dump, but here they are in a different place, totally a new place, a new life, a new hope, a new beginning. That's like a dream even for me, and it's a privilege for me to see this miracle in my life. It really changed me and I'm rejoicing always. Spaces this much I own. 